Welcome to Electron Line, and now we're going to take a look at the De Moivre's theorem. What is De Moivre's theorem? Well, it turns out that it's kind of an extension of the multiplication of two complex numbers when they're in polar form. We're now going to extend it taking a, a, uh, a complex number in polar form and raising it to any power. So let's say we want to take the complex number 1 plus the square root of 3i and raise to the 8 power. Do we have an easy way to do that? And once we convert that to the complex or to the polar form, it is easy to then take the root of a number like that, or I should say to multiply times itself multiple times. So that means that when we take a number like this in polar form, we raise it to an exponent n, this is equal to r to the n power times the cosine of n times the angle plus i times the sine of n times the angle. So it's actually fairly easy. So let's go ahead and take that example right there and put that into its polar form. So we can say that r would be equal to the square root of that would be a squared plus b squared. So in this case, that would be equal to the square root of 1 squared plus the square root of 3 squared. So that would be equal to the square root of 1 plus 3 or equal to the square root of 4, which is equal to 2. So r is equal to 2 in this case. What about the angle, theta? Theta is equal to the arctangent of, that would be b over a, which is equal to the arctangent of the square root of 3 divided by 1. And if I'm not mistaken, that is probably 60 degrees. Let's check that out. So take the square root of 3 and take the arctangent of that. And sure enough, that is, so therefore, theta is equal to 60 degrees, which is equal to pi divided by 3. Okay, now that we know that, let's go ahead and put this number into its polar form. So therefore we have z is equal to r, which is 2, times the cosine of the angle, pi divided by 3, plus i times the sine of pi divided by 3. All right, so now let's go ahead and take that number and raise it to the 8th power. So z to the 8th power is equal to r to the 8th power, times the cosine of n times the angle plus i times the sine of n times the angle. In this case, of course, well, I wanted to do the general form. Let's do the general form first. So n and n. So that means that this is 2 to the 8th power times the cosine of 8 times pi divided by 3 plus i times the sine of 8 times pi divided by 3. All right, let's see what that is equal to. So 2 to the 8th power, that would be equal to, let's see here, that's 256. 256 times the cosine of 8 pi divided by 3 plus i times the sine of 8 pi divided by 3. Well, in degrees, it might be a little bit easier, so I'm going to take, I'll multiply 60 times 8, so that would be equal to 256 times the cosine of 480 degrees plus i times the sine of 480 degrees. So that's, you can see that you could do it either in radians or degrees. If we subtract 2 pi from that, because of course anytime you go around the circle every 2 pi, you can simply take 2 pi out. So 2 pi would be 6 pi over 3. So this would then be the same as saying this is 256 times the cosine of 8 pi over 3 minus 6 pi over 3. That leaves me 2 pi over 3. So 2 pi over 3 uh, plus i times the sine of 2 pi over 3. And notice if I do it in degrees and I subtract 360 degrees from that, this gives me 256 times the cosine of 120 degrees plus i times the sine of 120 degrees. So if I now want to go ahead and turn that into a complex number, the cosine of 120 degrees is equal to what? So 120 times the cosine, that gives us minus 0.5. So this is equal to 256 times minus 0 0.5 plus i times, take the sine of 120 degrees, so 120 times the sine, that gives us 0 0.866, 0 0.866. And so finally, if I don't want to turn that into a complex number in this format, a plus ib, then I get 256 times a negative 0.5, that would be a minus 128, plus the sine of uh, 120 degrees, so 0 0.866, times 256. 
that would be plus I times 222. So you can see that fairly straightforward if you take a complex number, put it into a polar form right here, and then you raise it to the 8th power, you can readily get the results like that without going through an enormous amount of calculations. So that's the power of this technique. That's how we do that.